Hi guys, it's the Macintosh guide again, and as mentioned in the last video, I replaced my beautiful Mac Pro 6.1 with this absolute powerhouse of a machine, which is the Mac Pro 7.1, which is the 2019 model. Um, this machine has 96 gigs of RAM. It has a 16 core Intel CPU. Um, it also came with 256 base storage, but I also bought an AXL seal, which I was then able to put a one terabyte drive in and have this bad boy running off that. Um, it also has a 5500X, 5500X, a gig GPU as well, and it's it's been working absolutely flawlessly since I've got it. Um, let me just open this up and show the inside beauty of this machine. So I'll show you guys a video of the machine from the front and in the back. So as you can tell, as you can see, the blue is the Excelsior, um, and then you can tell there's a HDMI two ports. Um, there's a, obviously the power supply, and there's two Ethernet ports here as well, which I believe. Are are quite quick for modern times as well then you've got two usb-c ports um and two usb ports as well here and obviously a, a headphone jack here as well so um yeah that's the back of the the mac pro 7.1 now that everything's off as you guys can tell this is the the inside of the machine um the excelsior drives are, as i talked about earlier uh the ram slots and everything uh, all here the gpu of course is down here it's catching a bit of dust as you guys can probably tell and i knew do need to do a bit of cleaning on this machine even some of the cards up here have got some dust growing up so i do need to clean the machine but this is just to show you guys the the internals um of it it's an absolute powerhouse um also let me just show you guys the the fans as well of the machine three huge humongous fans as well so yeah let's Let's boot the system up and uh, yeah, I'll show you the how the performance is of the machine. To the Mac Pro, um, just to show you the specs, let me just open up system information. And as you can see, it's a 7.1, it's the tower, 16 core CPU. Um, it's also got 96 gigs of RAM. Let me show you guys the graphics car, which is the W5500X GPU. It's got eight gigs in VRAM. Um, interestingly enough, I actually put my own drives in as well into this machine. So um, it came with 256 gigs pre-installed. Um, I was not going to pay the extortionate prices that Apple were charging. So I got myself a Excelsior, as I mentioned earlier numerous times. Um, and yeah, I was able to put in a 500 gig Kingston SSD NVMe drive into one and, and also a one terabyte um, Samsung Evo Pro 980. Um, and yeah, they've been working fine. The main OS is actually installed onto this drive here. Um, and yeah, I've not really seen any problems with it. No slowdowns, no nothing. It's reading and writing quite quick as well. So yeah, it's been it's been brilliant. Um, just to kind of now go into doing a test that I think makes sense on this machine um, is is a couple. So I believe we should probably do like an application test, which I shall do now. And in the flick of my fingers, three, two, one, open. And you can tell everything is opening up on this on this Mac Pro device. Um, it's still going. That was fairly quick. That was that was very very quick on this machine. Um, it didn't stutter at all which is brilliant everything up a couple of things are jiggling up and down um but everything 
was perfect it worked absolutely fine um let me just close all of this stuff up and then we'll go to the next stress test which is a xcode benchmark i've got back let's run a xcode benchmark now i'm using xcode because i use that regularly um it, it's not going to be a test where i'm going to be running thousands and thousands of lines of code it's just a benchmark that was available online um by youtuber so i will also link his channel in the description as well um but yeah he provided the benchmark and i'm just going to use that to show you how quick it is able to do tasks um so the way we do this we open up terminal um it's obviously opened up a terminal box we need to cd into the xcode benchmark folder so type in cd copy you drag over the, the file folder and now that we're inside the folder all we need to do is because i've run the test previously in the past it's got a record of it and we just need to press enter and all we need to do is just wait for it to be done um it's it's actually very quick um what i will also do is i'll upload a separate video um, showing benchmarks between the 7,1 and the 6,1 trash can. Um, and I've actually got a D700 trash can, which is also going to be coming my way. Um, and my D500 trash can is also going for an upgrade. So I'll be having two beast D700 6,1 machines as well um, available in the office, which would be brilliant. Um, and yeah, it's it's obviously chugging along. It's going quite quickly compared to what the 6,1 was. I'll upload the results for the 6,1, which did this exact same test um, somewhere on the side of this video um, so that you can do a quick comparison. But it's coming to an end shortly as well. Also, guys, let me know if there's any, any other type of videos you guys want me to do. I've got a Mac Studio, which I can also do a couple of videos on. Um, I want to do more videos on the 7,1 and a couple of upgrades that I'm planning on doing in the future. So I'll be doing a couple of videos on that. Um, I will also be doing a breakdown um, of the 6,1. So I'll be taking it apart, showing you each component um, and also repasting the thermals on it, the, the CPU, sorry, um, because it, it needs a good clean, in my opinion. But look, the test is done. Um, you can tell it started at 4.20 p.m. and it ended at 4.22 p.m. 15 seconds past and it took a total of 92.123 seconds which is very quick um, for this machine so that was the benchmarks for this like the benchmark results have come up single core is 1147 not the greatest but it's still pretty good for the today and a multi-score of 15,886, which is absolutely brilliant for a machine like this. I'm pretty sure if I upgraded the CPU to the 28 core, then obviously I'm going to be seeing results which are astronomical. But I'm happy with this. It works fine. It works flawlessly. I've not had a single issue with the machine and the CPU power. I believe the 16 core is sometimes over doing it but i was able to get it again for a stellar price so i'm not going to complain about it the components test is obviously testing the 5500x and this is the mighty score of 44,988 so it it is a powerhouse um here's a comparison some of the stuff it did a test on um it's it's, it's honestly guys it's a it's an amazing machine um, it's obviously out of budget for a lot of people, but it, it's it, this is a remarkable, a remarkable piece of equipment that Apple have created. The video. Do I feel like that anyone should be buying this machine if you're just going to be doing minimal amount of coding or minimal amount of editing? Um, you know, honestly, no, you shouldn't be buying the Mac Pro. You should only be buying this beautiful machine if you are working with heavy, heavy, heavy amounts of video editing, heavy, heavy, heavy amounts of 
coding. Um, and it, it runs silent, never heard the fans kick on. It's, it's, a, it's a silent beast, I'd say. Um, pricing is obviously very expensive. Obviously, if I, if there's a £500 difference between the tower and the rack version. Obviously, we've got the, the tower version of it. Um, and as we can see, you know, if I wanted to spec this machine for what I have... Um, we 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 you know we're talking about a lot of money over here. Um, I obviously paid far less than this. However, still, I don't think it was a it was an amount that people should still be paying. If you really want to get a great machine by Apple, it has to be the Mac Studio. Um, this is the best desktop machine I believe Apple have made. And it is far, far cheaper. Obviously, downside, you can't boot camp Windows. You will have to get parallels. But even if you bought the top spec model, you're talking about £4,000, which is much, much cheaper than the Mac Pro. Um, and it will give you very good performance for day to day. Um, so, yeah, just I would say thank you for watching the video, guys. Obviously, this was a bit long uh, to talk about. I will also be uploading more benchmarks between the 7,1 and the 6,1 in the next couple of days. So do subscribe and, and keep a watch out for those videos. And, uh, you know, leave a comment if you have anything positive to say. If you leave a comment if you've got something negative to say. Um, like the video, dislike the video. It really helps me out. It lets me know what you guys want and what you guys liked what you guys didn't like and uh yeah it's the macintosh guide and uh, i'll see you guys in the next video